Hey friends, if you've watched the UFD Tech channel for any length of time in the last six months, you know that there was one product announcement that I was most hyped for. And no, it wasn't the RTX 30 series. I need eight cores plus an integrated graphics that's actually really good. And I want, no cap, the Ryzen 7 4700G. I desperately want this. We are waiting on the launch of the Renoir APUs. I slept in my bed and dreamt at night of having a Renoir APU in my laptop, in my desktop. And I can't wait to get my hands on the next gen Ryzen APUs. And I have to wait for my 4700G, my Renoir APU that I've been so longing for. And now after months of waiting, I finally have my Ryzen 7 4750G PC built. These things were announced in July and I am making this video here in September. It was a long wait, but was it worth it? Well, on paper at least, the 4750G looks super promising. It has eight cores and 16 threads and honestly looks realistically close to the 3700X in benchmarks that I've seen. It does have a few key differences. It only has a 65 watt TDP versus 95 watts. It only has eight megabytes of L3 cache instead of 32, but it has the advantage of having a Vega 8 graphics integrated into it. And now I have my fully customized mini PC but can it actually play games? But before we talk about that, I actually wanna go into a little reason why I was so excited for this setup. Reason number one is I absolutely love small form factor PCs. You guys might remember the video I did recently over on UFD Tech, where I tried to cram a 3950X and a 2080 Ti in this PC right here. It didn't quite work out so well for me, but many ITX PCs always enthrall me. And what is smaller than not having a GPU at all? My Inwin B one is a phenomenal case for that. So shrinking down but still having power is really important. And then reason number two is this PC right here. This is my main at-home work PC. It's an i9-10980XE 18 core with a Radeon RX 5500 XT because I need mostly computing power with very little graphics power. So having a lot of cores plus a minimal GPU is kind of my ideal setup to be honest. So the search for high-end CPU power without as much graphics necessity led me to a few things like this i9-9900K system right here. AMD is not the first to create an APU with eight cores. The 9900K has eight cores that can overclock to five gigahertz, and it happens to have an integrated graphics card as well. But as we'll show off in a second, it's actually kind of pathetic. It's basically used so that you can use Microsoft Word and not much else. AMD, however, has been on a different path for a while. So this was what was previously in my Inwin B1, a Ryzen 5 2400G. It has four cores, eight threads with a Vega 8 graphics, and it does okay. It could play video games, but the update to this, the 3400G, added no extra CPU horsepower and only slightly better graphics performance, which is why I was so anticipating the next refresh, the 4000G series. This is the Ryzen 7 4700G, eight cores, 16 threads, has everything that everybody loves about the Ryzen 3000 processor, but with a good enough graphics card, with hopefully good enough performance that it should compete in most gaming titles. But the question is, was it worth the wait? As I mentioned, the 4750G was announced and released back in July, July 21st. That's when AMD announced that it would be going to OEM only, which meant that it was only gonna be shipped to partners such as Dell and HP. That was a huge disappointment for me because that meant that I couldn't get my hands on the chip directly. But then thankfully, a couple weeks later, a seller on eBay actually listed these chips for sale where you could either buy them and have slow shipping speed or you could pay $120 for shipping and get it a couple days later. I, not wanting to spend $500 on a $300 processor, chose to go with the slow shipping route. It took three weeks to get to me and now we have it in my system. And after several rounds of testing, I'm finally ready to talk about it. It's been two months, which actually isn't all that bad considering that this actually even hasn't tested technically released in the United States yet, but it was a lot longer than I hoped to wait. Let's first compare it to the Intel equivalent, the i9-9900K, in a game that a lot of people play. 
Fortnite. We're gonna test it 720p low. And as you can see on the i9-9900K, we're barely getting above 30 FPS. It's actually really difficult to get good performance in a game that's not just a regular eSports title. You wanna play Red Dead Redemption 2? Good luck using the Intel because it's going to be absolute crap. Now this may have changed with the outcoming Tiger Lake CPUs that Intel is releasing on their mobile form factor. But when it comes to desktop, we have no other alternative. The 10900K actually uses the exact same GPU as the 9900K, so even if I might get two extra cores of CPU performance, the GPU is still not gonna be there. Now, 720p low on the 4750G. In Fortnite, we were able to average 122 FPS. Good enough for a high refresh rate monitor, nearly three to four times that of Intel's integrated graphics on their desktop chips. That is not bad, 120 FPS, but that's not every game that everybody plays. So I'm gonna go through a round of benchmarks to kind of give you the general perspective. I tested 720p low because that's kind of where I think that integrated graphics actually do really well, as well as 1080p low just to see if it could keep up. Valorant, we averaged 170 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn, the brand new title, 52 FPS. Death Stranding was 50.7, Red Dead Redemption 2 was 42.6, Witcher 3 was 55.5, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, 32 FPS, Grand Theft Auto 5, 118, COD Warzone, 77 FPS, and Crisis Remastered, 70 FPS. I did test it in the new Crisis game, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that was the only one that this little APU couldn't crack 30 FPS on. We came in at an average of 29.6 FPS. 10 AP benchmarks are also pretty good. Valorant, 174. Seems like we're CPU bottlenecked there. Horizon Zero Dawn, 29.3 FPS. Death Stranding, 28.8. Red Dead 2, 26. Witcher 3, 28. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, 31. Grand Theft Auto 5, 84 FPS. COD Warzone, 47. Fortnite, 88.5. And Crisis Remastered, 36.9 with Microsoft Flight Sim coming in at a bad 20.9. So those numbers don't look great at 1080p because they mostly are sub 20. However, as I know from growing up only having access to office PCs, if AMD is shipping this in OEMs and my parents would have happened to have purchased one of these, I still could have played games on it. Playing games at 24 FPS is tolerable if that's all you know, and having this in a desktop PC that is meant for business and some light GPU workload is actually pretty dang good and would be tolerable for me. And dropping it down to 720, as you saw, actually changes the story quite a bit with you not having sub 30 FPS in most games. So the 4750G actually knocks it out of the park when it comes to integrated graphics. And if we compare it to AMD's latest mobile graphics, the U series, I haven't had a chance to test out any of the Renoir H series processors, we find that it also beats those two. I found that it beat both the 4500U and 4700U laptops that I've tested by about 20 to 25% in most titles. And then also the ZenBook 14 that I had, which had a Ryzen 5 45 500U and an MX350 dedicated GPU, the 4750G beat that by about 10%. So for just having a single chip doing all of this work is actually great performance for gaming. Now let's go ahead and talk about professional applications because I, as I mentioned, I wanna replace my i9-10980XE with this. So I did a test premiere render and my 18 core chip was able to complete it in just under five minutes. My eight core 16 thread chip was able to complete it in seven and a half minutes, which is 53% slower, but that's also because it has 55% fewer cores, but also takes up, I would guess, probably about a 10th of the desk space as my 10980XE system. Now, I can't do everything on a mini ITX PC that I can on the full ATX because I don't have uh, capture cards where I can do streaming off of them, but if I was willing to sacrifice and go to only USB capture cards, I might be able to find an alternative for everything I'm trying to do in such a small form factor. There are speed compromises that are going on, but again, it's about fitting as much performance in a small form factor as I want. And 
and let's just go ahead and compare CPU benchmarks really quickly of the 4750G versus the 3700X, and we find that it is slightly worse. It isn't as good as the 3700X. This is probably owing to the fact that it has a slightly lower clock speed, has a 65 watt TDP, and also only has eight megabytes of L3 cache, whereas the 3700X has more. But comparing it also to the 9900K, it's also roughly in the same ballpark as those two chips. It doesn't come anywhere near my 10980XE, but it never expected it to with it having far fewer cores. So I actually really like this system. Takes up very little desk space, but then also delivers in everything that I need it to. And honestly, these new APUs hit a sweet spot that I think is going to be very common in the next few years, which is having something that can play local games for your esports titles and those that are latency sensitive. Your Valorants, your Fortnite, anything of the sort that is more esports, Overwatch, all of that, because you can manage 120 plus FPS on this. But then for the AAA titles, the Cyberpunks, the Witcher 3s, and all of that, well, you then just resort to cloud streaming those so that you can get 1080 60 FPS with high details. And honestly, the latency on a single player game isn't as important. So the APU can kind of deliver on that. So I think, AMD is hitting the mark with their new APUs. I still want an upgrade to the GPU. The Vega graphics are kind of really outdated at this point. Even though they might be the best on the market for integrated in desktop, they're ages old at this point. We don't have any Navi iteration of integrated GPUs. So I'm excited to see what our DNA 2 could potentially be in an upcoming APU from AMD. But I need to answer the question, is this worth it? And to be quite honest, if I'm being truthful with myself in the current form factor that I have it in, no, it's not. Because I spent $815 on this PC right here. Whereas you can spend $815 and get a much better gaming experience. So let me break down why it's so expensive. Obviously I have the $380 that I spent on the CPU, which is partially because I was impatient and imported it from Hong Kong. So let's say that's $300 for anybody who wants to pick it up when it does come out to retail in the US. You add on to the fact that I needed a mini ITX B550 or X570 motherboard, and I'm looking at $200 for that right there. The RAM is $70, the case and power supply of the Inwin B1 are $85, and then the SSD with the one terabyte transcend that I have in here was another 80 bucks. That totals up to what I spent on it, $815. If we knock down the $80 off the CPU price, and let's say you're not gonna be stupid and put it in a mini ITX system, you put it in a regular ATX system, you still have to get B550, A520, or X570. Let's say you can get a decent motherboard for $70 at that price point. We're gonna knock a total of $210 off the price to put this more in the $600 region. I can also assure you, you can build a much better gaming PC for $600 than this guy. So it's kind of in a weird place. The 4750G being priced at what a 3700X is gives it very little reason to exist for most people. You don't need eight cores for a gaming scenario. Honestly, you can kind of get by with six cores and get close to the same performance and spend a lot less. And considering that you're gonna spend a lot less, you can also get a dedicated graphics card in at that $600 price point. That's an RX 580 or better. So it really, really, isn't worth it for most people. I don't see these APUs honestly getting mainstream appeal because they don't satisfy a good value-oriented perspective at this point. If the gaming performance was a little bit better, I can maybe argue otherwise. Actually, it'd probably have to be double for me to say that the $300 cost on this chip actually hits where I want it to go. But for my purposes, Slimming down my production PC as small as I can go without compromising what I regularly do with it, well, I think AMD's hit the mark here. I can still stream on it. I can still render my videos in an efficient manner. The only thing I'm missing in this ITX form factor is the ability to have capture cards. I get nearly full Ryzen performance in the palm of my hand in a slim form factor, and that is actually really worth it to me. So what do you guys think of the new Ryzen 4000 APUs? I'm one of the very few who has it. 
I don't think many people need to scramble to get one, but I'm glad that I actually did and I didn't have to wait for AMD for it. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'm keen to hear from you down there, but I'm excited to see where AMD takes this to the future. It's not quite ready yet, but it's going to be ready at some point. And honestly, I can't wait till we get Xbox Series S performance in a single AM5 chip. That's really where I'm excited to see where AMD is taking this. And Intel as well with their Project Z graphics could potentially bring a player that competes with this next year. Maybe with Rocket Lake, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen on Z490, but I do look forward to integrated graphics getting a lot better because this is a far cry from where we were a few years ago where integrated GPUs could barely run modern mainstream titles. Now I can hit 60 FPS at 720p low with some AAA games and the 4750G absolutely delivers on that. So let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. I'm Brett with the Brainish channel. Thank you for watching these videos and allowing me to kind of uh, purchase stupid crap like this. See you in the next video. Cheers.